So right now, waiting to learn whether there will be a Senate hearing next week over a sexual assault allegation against the president's Supreme Court nominee. Remember that story? It's a big one today, still developing at this hour. Negotiations are said to be ongoing with the lawyer for the accuser, Christine Blasey Ford. This morning's original deadline of 10 a.m. has become the end of the day today, 10 p.m. we're hearing. She has agreed to talk under some pretty unusual conditions. Meanwhile, President Trump is calling out Christine Blasey Ford by name for the first time. Chief Congressional Correspondent Mike Emanuel on Capitol Hill, where, where things stand at this moment. It's been changing throughout the day. Good evening, Mike. No doubt, Brett. Good evening to you. A senior Republican source tells Fox details are coming soon. A bit of a tease there. This as the Senate Judiciary Committee is awaiting a response from Christine Blasey Ford about whether she will show up for a hearing on Wednesday. Either way, the president and the Senate Majority Leader are signaling they won't let this drag out. But here's what I want to tell you. In the very near future, Judge Kavanaugh will be on the United States Supreme Court. Majority Leader Mitch McConnell tried to reassure conservatives at the end of it all, they'll have the votes. A 10 a.m. deadline came and went, but the negotiations continued. Ford's legal team wanted a Thursday hearing with Kavanaugh testifying first and judiciary members, not outside attorneys, asking questions. Committee sources say Kavanaugh first and the demand that the committee subpoena Kavanaugh classmates are non-starters. Judiciary Republicans countered with a Wednesday hearing with a female attorney doing the questioning of both and that Ford would go first. President Trump signaled last night he's running out of patience. To take a man like this and be smart. Now, with that being said, let her have her say and let's see how it all works out. But I don't think you can delay it any longer. Then today on Twitter, the president wrote asking to see police reports. I have no doubt that if the attack on Dr. Ford was as bad as she says, charges would have been immediately filed with local law enforcement authorities by either her or her loving parents. I ask that she bring those filings forward so we can learn date, time and place. I was appalled by the president's tweet. I thought that the president's tweet was completely inappropriate and wrong. Collins, a key GOP swing senator, says she's fine having hearings delayed a couple of days. Former Vice President Joe Biden, a former judiciary chairman, said there should not be a vote if Professor Ford decides against testifying. She should not have to go through what Anita Hill went through and some of the questions that she got asked and the, and, and the way the right went after her on national television and questioned her integrity and questioned her, not just her honesty, questioned her behavior. And the California congresswoman who Professor Ford first approached was asked if she has regrets about the way Democrats handled her situation. I felt offended for her that, that, there, that there were leaks when she decided to speak publicly, uh, I was proud of her. Another critical Republican senator is Alaska's Lisa Murkowski, who is under tr tremendous pressure from outside groups to vote no. She has been very, very quiet in recent days. Brett? Okay, we'll come back for breaking details. Mike, thank you.